Welcome to Belmont Banter, the official podcast of Whitstable Town FC. Every week we chat to ex-players, supporters and invited guests here on Belmont Banter. Welcome to the official podcast of Whitstable Town FC. Whitstable Town Football Club's main sponsor is Fibertech UK Limited. Hello again, everyone. And this week we've got Gary Locke here with us. And Gary, I don't know a lot about your football history, mate, and even less about when you very first started and got interested in football. How old were you? Uh, I was under nines, halfway through under nines. I uh, joined a local team called Kennerton Juniors FC. Uh, one of my good friends, uh, his name was actually James Bond, believe it or not. Uh, I went to nursery with him and then into primary school. I wasn't really interested in football at first. Uh, I enjoyed climbing trees a bit more than actually playing football. But uh, he invited me along to one game. And uh, I put a kit on. The kit didn't fit me where I was quite big. So that was quite laughable. Uh, and then I scored in that game and then really went on from there. Just really took to it and really enjoyed it and carried on playing for Kennington for the next two to three years. Kennington, that was a local team for you then, yes? Yes, Kennington Juniors is a local team for me. I'm from Ashford. I'm an Ashford-based boy. Uh, I... Uh, I joined there at under nines and I believe I went to under thirteens and then I moved on to Gravesend and Northfleet, which then changed their name to Ebbsfleet that year, I believe. So yeah. Did you skip school football then? Did you not get involved in school football? Uh I got involved in my last years at primary school and then I went to uh, a school called Swaylands within Lanham, so Maidstone. I I played school football there. We, we had quite a good team, actually. Uh, we had uh, a few good players there. Uh, and then I, I actually played for Kent schools throughout my youth as well. That's when I started to take it serious, when my dad said to me, right, you either need to take it serious or is it, is it enjoyment that you want from it? Or, or do you want to, you know, go on and do something with yourself? So, yeah. That's fair enough. And um, when you've said that you've done the, the, the Kennington Juniors and then you talked about Ebbsfleet, what age was it that you joined Web Ebbsfleet then? Uh, under 13s, I joined Ebbsfleet. I knew, I knew a couple of players there that I played at Kent schools with uh, that have gone on to play sort of scaffold level. I joined there and then I played up to under 16s. Uh, they offered me to go to the, the the scholarship scheme, sort of, you know, the, you do the two years at school as well as you do your training. It was something that I wasn't really interested in because where I was quite a big lad and I could always handle myself, I wanted to just dive straight into men's football. And that's that's when the opportunity uh, arose with, I used to do a, a uh, training development thing. I don't know if you know him, William Bone, Billy Bones. Heard of William, yeah. He does a he does a like a, a soccer school sort of thing, where he get, goes across the country against these teams like you know Charlton, Southampton, Newcastle, and uh, we basically try to get get young players to get picked up and eventually go on, and that's where we played uh, uh, Ramsgate at Fanet uh, by the I can't think of the ground it's by by the Gary not mm -hmm. far from the yeah. power station the old power station. Yeah, uh, yeah, we played there against uh, a mixed bag of first team and twenty threes, and then that's when uh, Jim Ward signed me for for Ramsgate at sixteen. Oh, good old Jim, eh? He, yeah, he, keep, he keeps popping up on here. I've uh, I've got Jim has done one, Danny's done one as well. Yeah, they're, they're, yeah, they're I, really I, good guys. I didn't really uh, didn't really know Danny, but yeah, I spent I spent about a year and a half with Jim. Uh, I just being quite young, a bit naive sometimes with the inexperience. I sort of struggled to hold my place down within the team. So the penny didn't really drop for myself. I sort of knew what I could do and what I can't do and what level I should be at. I feel that I could play, I can play that level. I just, I, like I said, it just didn't really fall for me. So I sort of dipped in and out of other teams within that 16 to 18 period. And what then position, I. Uh, what position did you play, Gary? I play centre forward. Play centre forward at the minute. 
and uh, yeah, so yeah. So how long did you actually stay down at Ramsgate? I stayed at Ramsgate for a year and a half. Uh, I managed to get, so I've done okay there, not too bad. I uh, I went away to Cholton for a couple of weeks. Jim had put me in touch with a person that he knows there, a coach. Uh, but I was unfortunately a little bit too old. I think that he wasn't looking for. So I was into my second year of scholar. So it, they'd almost have to offer me a pro deal if it was going to be anything worth it. So, so I come back and uh, then I went away again to uh, Aldershot. And the same thing happened there. I'd done really, really well. The coach really liked me, but he said, look, I want you to come back the following year at 18 to try and get a pro. But it was, he ended up leaving for another job. So I sort of was a bit unstuck there. And uh, yeah, and then everything sort of fell apart at Ramsgate. And uh, I ended up going to Hive for a couple of weeks on loan. And then I ended up getting sent off, which ended that stupidly but so I was a bit of a bit of a losing my head sometimes when I was a bit younger nothing was really going my way you know I was I was going through a bad time I said to my dad I should have maybe gone to under 18s football instead of straight into men's give myself that another two years before heading to the uh the older football but you know it's happened well I've done I've done all right played a good level and I, I and I'm enjoying it at the minute where I am that's good. And where did you move on then from Ramsgate? Because you said you were there for a year and a half. Yeah, I moved. So I, I actually signed a two-year contract there. So we we terminated the contract for me to move on. I went to, I finished that year at Dill with Derek. And then uh, I spent a bit of time there to the end of the season. But I was sort of coming into uh, 1920 and I started a family quite young. Uh, 20 years old with my wife now so I joined my local club so Ashford United uh, Ashford United reformed so I joined Ashford United and I spent about six months there before they started to uh, bring in a budget and uh, so basically they reformed under under really no budget and then uh, they as soon as they could get a bit of a budget they sort of started to ship a few players out and afraid that I was one of them. And I just sort of said to myself, right, I just need to step back a little bit, go into sort of local football, Kent County Division One, with a team called Bromley Green, which is a local team at Ashford. I don't know if you've heard of them before. Yes, I have, yeah. Yeah, we, so we, uh, we won the Kent County Division One. We went up into the Premier and won that. So we won back to back promotions that year, obviously, them two years. And then, uh, our manager at that time, uh, Dave Smith, he uh, ended up moving on to Lid, Lid Town. And then at first I didn't move for a couple of months. And then I eventually moved to Lid with all the other players. And I spent a good three, three maybe four years there. And we we done really well in when the uh, Kent and Victor League formed. I believe we, yeah, I, think, I believe we come uh, second three years and then we come third in the last year. That was good. When, yeah. Winning back-to-back -back, uh, promotions like you did, you must have been knocking the goals in all right then, because if you were up front... Well, it's, I I actually got played uh, right wing them years, where I was probably a bit younger and a bit fitter. Uh, yeah, I, I ended up playing right wing for the year, for the first year, and then I ended up going up front. But yeah, I, I've always based myself on goals. I'm I, I'm a bit of a hold-up player, a bit of a, bit of a strong lad, so... Uh, I like to base myself around a bit of an old-fashioned centre forward, but I can also do a bit of the dirty work as well. Yeah, that's, that's the important part as well, isn't it? That often yeah. gets overlooked. Yeah, of course, yeah. And and I think nowadays, you know, you've got to work hard. If you're not having a good game, I always say to myself, you know, you've got, you give 110% on work rate, the, the rest will follow. If you've got the ability to do it, the rest will follow. I'm hearing, I'm hearing a lot of good things about Lid, so... What was it like down there for you? Did you enjoy it down there? Yes, I my first. So I've I stayed there for three, four years. I really enjoyed it there. I've got some really good friends. I've still got some really good friends there now. Yeah, I've got nothing. I've got no bad word to say about them. Really, uh, I really enjoyed my time, and uh, we come we come close to a really good Hollands and Blair side, who had then gone up into the uh, Skeffold Prem. 
oh, after they had won it a few times and got their ground sorted out. Yeah, that's right. How, how long did you stay at Lid then, in total? Uh, I have been there for about five, five years, four or five years. I'd say four years I've been there in total. I, uh, I did go away to Hollands and Blair for a year under uh, Brian Jock, they call him. Uh, he he was a uh, manager with Damon Hodge at Hollands and Blair. We had a really good year in the Prem, and then I had another child, so it sort of set me back on the commitment and what I was doing. So I then went back to Lid for one more year, which I really enjoyed again. And then, yeah, so I yeah I spent I spent about four years there, which was pretty good. That was good. And does that take us full circle to where you are at the moment, or? Uh, no, I am currently at Kennerton FC uh, in the Skiffle Premier Premier Division. So they come up from the County League. Yeah. They come up from the County League. They won the County League, and then I joined there. I joined Kennerton back, and now I'm there now. I'm in my fourth year with them now. And um, what position are you playing there at Kennington? I'm playing up front there at Kennington. So when I when I left uh, when I went back to Leeds, I, I went back up front. You're knocking the goals in. I'm not doing too bad. So my first year, I hit 18. Uh, my second year, obviously, COVID hit. I think I got 10. And then, obviously, we had another year of hit COVID. But last year, I was doing quite well. I had 15 and 12 starts. And this year, I've got 7 and 11 at the minute. So, not doing too bad. Oh, good for you. Well done. It's always, I suppose, the benchmark for a striker is if you can get more than 20 a season... You've had a decent season, haven't you? Yeah, so I, I tend to look at myself as uh, a couple of years ago, I put a lot of weight on. So uh, I tend to, uh, I got myself really fit. I ended up losing four stone. Uh, wow. So the last, the, yeah, the last couple of years, I've, I've really hit the ground running. So I'd like to keep that up. Uh, my movement's got better and I can I can really put a shift in now. So it's, it's I'm getting the rewards from doing that, you know, so... I can see that you're a big. I can see that you're a big guy. Do you tend to like to hold the ball up? Is that how you play? Yeah, that's how I play. Yeah, without blowing my own trumpet, I do. I do like to. I can do either side of it. You know, I can run in behind. I'm not the quickest. I will happily admit that. But I will run in behind and feel like I've got that uh, that movement as well. But obviously, the last few years where I was a bit bigger and I was carrying a bit of weight. My movement took a took a back hit. Really, I couldn't. So my body was, my mind was telling me one thing, but my body couldn't do it. So that's where I was sort of getting frustrated with myself and what I was doing. Yeah, it's a very difficult balance, isn't it, to get it right? Yeah. I mean, you you sort of didn't actually say it, but you implied that when you were a bit younger, if you'd have gone down a different path or taken a bit more, shall I say, a bit more interest in it you might have gone on a bit further. Whitstable Town Football Club's main sponsor is Fibertech UK Limited. Yeah, yeah, I, I believe like there's a lot of players out there that will say that as well, you know, so, but yeah, for myself, I do, I do definitely believe, you know, what I know now mentally, not so much physically, what I know mentally now, if I applied myself how I do now, when I was younger, I feel that I've definitely gone on and done a bit better, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a very important word there you use when you're talking about the mental side of things. Very easy to, uh, well, certainly if you're on the sidelines watching someone play, you've got no idea what's going on in their head. No, of course. And that's, I think this is such a, a, a big subject now within football. You know, you know how men act sometimes, they, they tend to bottle it up, you know, and, and I think that's what I've sort of done. I've manage to see what I'm doing or what I'm about, where I should be. You know, I'm, I'm always believed in how well I play and how well I can't play, if you know what I mean. So mm -hmm. I, 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 know, I know what I can and can't do and I know what level I should be at and I shouldn't. That's good. You're absolutely right. The mental side of things is such a big issue now. I mean, I read an, an interesting article the other day but one of the professional players and he was talking about he was, he was a wing back and he was talking about he gets really, really terrified at times when he goes to an away ground. Funnily enough, it's the, the grounds that are smaller that he, he has the biggest problem with because he hears, hears the comment. When he's in a big ground, it's just noise. 
But when he's in a small ground, he hears the individual comments and he says sometimes it's hard to take. Yeah, I, I think, you know, growing up from where from Ashford, you, you sort of you hear them comments from such an early age anyway. So you tend to deal with it uh, in a different way. So for me, it's them sort of comments don't really bother me. I've had all them comments. I've, you know, I can take them comments on the chin. Uh, and you, you just got to sort of get on with it. And I know sometimes it plays in your head. And, you know, especially within the non-league, the, the fans that do come, they are right on top of you. They certainly so, are. So, and I've always been been a believer, you know, they come and pay their money. So they, they're entitled to their opinion. Sometimes you- their opinion is... It's a little bit, it's a little bit harsh, but yeah, a little you know, bit. You got, to, you got to take that on the chin. Who did you play against last weekend, and how did you get on? Uh, we played well in, well in town, and we won five two, and I scored a hat trick. Oh, good for you! Well done. Who have you got so, this weekend? We are away to Chatham Town. Wow, blimey! Yeah, a that's very gonna, tough game. That's going to be a good. Is that in the, in the league, or is that in? Yeah, that's in the league. Yeah, we come up this year. Uh, Kennet and come up uh, from points per game. Uh, we were awarded promotion. I believe we had the ninth best points per game in the country. So it was a very deserved promotion to the Skeffel Premier. I would have loved to win it, you know, naturally with, a, yes. with the trophy there. But I believe Kennet and as a club and the people behind Kennet and uh, the manager. John, the oak, like the chairman and and the fans that they were there, they really deserved it. So, so yeah, I'm I'm pleased for Kennerton as a club, and obviously being there as a young star, it did uh, it really shows that what they have done. Oh, that's brilliant! Well, more power to your elbow. I mean, it's so nice to hear you enthuse about your local club. And obviously, you're on a bit of a roll at the moment. Yeah, we're doing really well. We, uh, we've we done really well in the FA Cup this year. We got to the second qualifying round, which is the club's best history like run in the, the competition. We we bowed out to Carl Short and Athletic, which are, are a very good club. I yeah. believe they'll be going for promotion in, in step uh, step two. I think they're step two or step step three. They're a very good outfit. I think they just narrowly lost to Ebbsfleet at the weekend in the uh, third qualifying round. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and we've done reasonably well in the, the FA Vars in the last couple of years. So we uh, we got to the third qualifying round to Sutton Common Rovers, who have just played on BBC. Cool, uh, we lost We lost on penalties to them last year, which is good. But, uh, really yeah. good. So, yeah, the, the club's moving in the right direction. And, who's, uh, your, who's your manager there? Uh, he's, he's a young, he's a young uh, manager. Uh, his name's Dan Storer. Yeah, you might have heard of him. He might yeah. he's been at, he played at Hive, yes. uh, and uh, he might have been at, at Whitstable as well. You know, yeah, it's a possibility uh, as a youngster. Uh, but yeah, he had his career cut short because of injury, and uh, he had uh, so he took over Kenton in the county Kent County Division Two, I believe. Yeah, and he's got him all the way to uh, Scaffold Premier. Brilliant! What a what a guy! Well done to him. And well yeah. done to you as well, because you've been part of this for the whole, what, five years you've been there now? Yeah, I, I'm into, yeah, I believe I'm into my fifth year now with, with them. Brilliant. All right. I think that's right, yeah. Well, that brings us right up to date, which is um, is a good little story and a good journey yeah. for you, because uh, at one time there, it looks as if, you know, where you're going to t- play at Charlton and places like that, all of a sudden it looks as if you were going to go on a different journey, didn't it? Yeah, listen, I know there's a lot of players within the non-league that they, you know, they go out and have these trials and, you know, the cliche says we've all had a trial, you know, and uh, I know there's people out there that have done this and they've done that. The beckon of non-league happens, but it's all about the advice I'd give to, to young players coming through is not necessarily sit on the bench for 50, 60 pounds, go, go to one, two divisions lower and carry on playing football. Get your mentality right, and then clubs will soon come and look for you. What sound advice that is. I'll tell you what, that is brilliant to say that. I love that, because you're quite right. A lot of the lads uh, think that they've got golden boots on, and they see the pound signs, and end up sitting on yeah. the bench. Yeah, it's ridiculous. You know, uh, We've all been there, and I think there's a lot of players that, that have been there and done it. Uh, I, I was young. You know, when you get offered... I don't know, 50, 60 pound at 17, 18, you're like, oh, that's, that's great. 
realistically, it's not great. You're you're just you're just a squad number. You know, you sit on the bench, you watch games pass you by, go home, you say to your dad or you say to your mum, like, oh, I'm not really enjoying this, I'm not playing football, you know, and sometimes to take that step back or, you know, go one league below it or even two and just get continuous football and just keep playing and playing and playing. Wow. You've actually nailed it right on the head there. Well, we're time sensitive on these things, so I'll just wrap things up here now. So from me here yep. at Belmont Banter... And Gary Lock, you're in, well, you're in your garden, aren't you, Gary? Yeah, I am, yeah. In the yeah, garden, in it garden. looks as if the sun's out as well. So <laughs> it's uh, goodbye from us and goodbye from Gary, and we'll meet you again soon. Thanks, mate. Take care. Whitstable Town Football Club's main sponsor is Fibertech UK Limited. They are providers of optical fibre services to the telecoms industry, specialising in optical fibre provision, local and long haul. We offer a full turnkey solution to our clients throughout London and the south of England. Contact us through the website for more details. Your host, Tony Rouse, every week on Belmont Banter for news about local football in Kent and beyond. I do hope that you've enjoyed today's episode of Belmont Banter. Don't forget there's a new episode out every week which comes out on a Sunday night, early Monday morning. And you can leave your suggestions for a guest to invite at the end. And leave a like and don't forget to pass it on to all your mates. Cheers.